Hello mis amores, for the first time ever I think in this series, we're starting off this video in the morning. Cause I think the last time, I always said, okay let's go, okay. Please don't be broken, please don't be broken. Okay, I always said like, okay let's go back to morning Vincent, because I would have already made the breakfast. And then taken a shower, anyway, you don't care, I've already taken a shower and I'm ready to make breakfast. Which I guess I'll be having in a couple of hours now after all, but more on that later. This is another three meals, three countries video. I love exploring new cuisines or just new recipes of food that you don't really get that much here in Germany if you don't seek it out. I'm sure there are places that serve this kind of food, but if you don't go there, you don't really know what's there. And so usually I will just think of a country that I'm interested in or not, <laughs> and I'll just look up country breakfast, country lunch, and this is how this goes. And then usually I'll find something that looks nice and tasty and I'm intrigued by, and here we are. Without further ado, we're gonna travel to Madagascar, which I had to do a presentation on in like 8th or 7th grade. For that reason, I will never forget that the capital of Madagascar is Antananarivo, which is only surprising to me because while I don't think I'm super bad at knowing capitals, I also don't think I'm super great. And I'm sure many of you guys will not have heard of this either, and so you're welcome for this information. We're gonna make mofogasi, mofogasi, <laughs> these are Madagascan pancakes. They're actually yeasted pancakes, which I don't think I've ever my yeasted pancakes. I knew they were yeasted and still I thought it'll be fine. I can just quickly make them. But like obviously yeast has to do its thing and so I just now read the first step to this whole recipe and of course the batter will have to rest for one or two hours. It's okay. In the introduction it says a slightly sweet cake or bread. Mofugasi is served as a breakfast street food with coffee in Madagascar. I love coffee, so that's a plus for me. This time I was a little lazy to convert all of the ingredients into the metric system. I will just put that on the screen. So here's what you need. Half a cup of whole wheat pastry flour or all-purpose flour. A quarter of a cup and then another two tablespoons of cream of rice or rice rawa. I had never heard of this. Research also told me that apparently you can just blitz rice and then you have the cream of rice and so that's what I did. We're just gonna go with that. Half a teaspoon of dry yeast, two tablespoons of sugar, divided use, whatever that means, three quarters of a cup of lukewarm water right here, some vanilla extract, optionally one and a half teaspoon of condensed milk. I'm not sure if I'm gonna use that because in other recipes it didn't mention the condensed milk at all and one and a half teaspoons will still leave me with like an almost full can of this condensed milk opened that I will never use. And lastly, just some oil to fry them later. You can just add the cream of rice into one, like <laughs> the quarter of a cup and then also the two tablespoons. The ingredient list just confused me. Put it into a mixing bowl, add half a teaspoon of the instant yeast, one teaspoon of the sugar, I guess that's why it said divided use, and just the lukewarm water. Now mix well. Oh, <laughs> also add the flour. I forgot about the flour. I just looked at it and I was like, wait, when do we add this? <laughs> I'm actually waiting for some furniture to get delivered and I hate furniture delivery. I think I will have to go downstairs and pick it up myself, hoping that it won't be too heavy for me because I'm all by myself. Thank you. I think this has been mixed well enough that we cover the bowl and set it aside for one to two hours as I said. The more the batter rests, the more chance the cream of rice has to soften, apparently. One to two hours. I'm so hungry. I'm back. I'm back. <laughs> I'm back. I must say this recipe and I, we're not off to the greatest start. This is just not my kind of breakfast. I'm usually very, very hungry in the morning and having to wait literal hours to even being able to make it just not my kind of breakfast yeah maybe i would make it as like a brunch situation where i would have already eaten breakfast i'm still excited for it don't get me wrong here it is it's become very frothy even though it's supposed to only get frothy in the next step <laughs> it's been about an hour and like 45 to 50 minutes so i think we're good now is when we add the rest of the ingredients so we add the sugar 
and the vanilla extract or whatever it is I'm using. And you would also add the condensed milk now, but I decided against it for reasons I've already explained. Do you even listen to me? I don't know, do I have to be careful with not beating out the air? Because I wasn't. This looks kind of lumpy. Ta-da! Ooh, it's also vegan, no? I hate to break it to you guys, but we're gonna have to cover this and let it rest for another 30 to 45 minutes. I love this. Hello, it's been 45 minutes. It looked frothier before. I think it's even been more than 45 minutes. So I think that's just what we're going with. Honestly, I did some research, thought about life a little. I thought about everything a little. Hey, 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 it's Double V, voice of a Vincent, reporting live yet again. And my job right now is only to tell you about a problem. Actually, a problem with a problem that I faced filming this video, that I also ranted, or not to sound too dramatic, but almost cried about for like <laughs> maybe five to 10 minutes. Cause it was shortly before then that I realized that I didn't have the proper pan I needed in order to make these pancakes. Maybe it's for the best that I I didn't even record my breakdown. <laughs> But back to whatever I said almost 30 minutes after my almost breakdown. Then I even almost ordered one of the pans, which was 40 euros. I was just like, ah, oh, that's so unnecessary. And I know it sucks now because I can't make this recipe as authentically as possible, but it would also be really, really stupid to buy this pan. Like we've got already got so much stuff here and we would never use it. And so uh, I'm sorry, but we're just gonna make normal pancakes with and hope that, I don't know. This is what my Mofogasi look like. My first ones are a bit light now looking at them. They look like really nice pancakes, let's be honest. They do not resemble what they're supposed to look like. I'm not sure if I have yours in Madagascar, but if you see this video and are disappointed, I am too, I'm sorry. Let's try them, maybe they're still good. Let's not try them. This is my furniture delivery, fuck this. Ah. <sighs> Okay, um, <laughs> I hope I'm not too sweaty on camera, but I want to try them while they're still kind of warm. That was very exhausting. It's also very hot outside. It's almost 30 degrees today, which is like, it's April, calm down. <laughs> Cheers. Very tough consistency. I think this is just because they're so thin. I think in a ball, they would be a little airier and not so tough, but probably also still chewy. Mmm, these are really nice. They have a bit of a crunch to it, but I think it's just because I didn't blitz the rice enough. <laughs> they have a nice sweetness to them as well. It's not even a lot of effort making these. It's very, very easy and quick. Obviously the waiting time is annoying and takes a while. And so I don't know if that's worth it for you, but if you have this, kind of a pan that you need for it. I think you should definitely give this a go. It's very interesting, especially with the rice. It just tastes really good. I'll be back for lunchtime, actually. Really, it it is lunchtime already because that just took me. What the fuck on? And here's to hoping that recipe number two will not make us question ourselves. Even if none of the issues of that first problem were the recipe's fault, I'm blaming myself. It's okay, guys. We're leaving Madagascar and we're going to Serbia. Yeah. Mainly because I asked my friend Nick, what should I make? Tell me three recipes from three different countries. He told me one and he told me this one because he's from Serbia and so we're gonna make Gibanica. Maybe I should have asked him how to pronounce it as well. Would have been smart. Slavic languages. They often elongate the third to last syllable and so I think it is Gibanica. Whatever. So essentially it's a dough that we're not gonna make ourselves because it's fairly hard to make yourself, I think, filled with lots of milk-based stuff put into a snail-like form, and then we bake it. That seems very easy and straightforward, so we're gonna make it. Here's what you need. This is some phyllo pastry. I really wanna have some baklava right now. 300 grams of feta, 125 grams of sour cream, 50 milliliters of yogurt, but really this is just a guessing game. 
one tablespoon of oil, one egg, and a little bit of salt. I'm already a little bit afraid because we didn't put any seasoning into that, like a little bit of salt, but that's it. Let's mix this well. Maybe I will ask him. Machst du da noch andere seasoning? Oder? Okay. Time to call an assemble nation and hopefully eat at some point. <laughs> I've also never worked with this dough before. Look guys, it's so, so, so thin. It seems pretty sturdy. I don't know why there's a cut. Oh, are these two pieces? Now we put a little bit of a mixture onto each layer. I just don't know how much. Maybe this plate also isn't the way to go. I think this is like a good amount, right? Now we have to roll it. Uh, oh, okay. See, I don't know why it's dying on me right now, but I think it's still salvageable. How did this become so brittle now? How do I transfer it here? Why is it dying on me? This will be the beginning of our snake. Guys, it's completely dying on me right now. I don't know what to do. This is dead. Ah! This was supposed to be so easy. Things are just... Not at all going to plan today. Oh, Ta-da, guys, does it not look great? It is a snake. That's all I was asked to do. I had no idea this was gonna be so stressful. Now let's just brush some oil on top. 200 degrees, 40 minutes, I'll be back. And hopefully I'll be more calm and collected. I'm sorry. Ta-da! You hear that? The sound of a great Serbian meal that I've forgotten the name of. Gubarnica. Mm -hmm. It may look a little dark on camera, but trust me, it's not that dark. It's Naomi's kind of burned, and it's my perfectly cooked. So this looks really, really good. Right now, I'm most excited for the sound of it. So, shall we dive in? The microphone is really close now. I expected more and better. I've realized after that the recipe did provide me with images of how to fill the phyllo pastry. Let's just say they put less filling on each layer of the phyllo pastry. Maybe it wouldn't have been that brittle then, but mine will just be very packed at least. It looks like a tortilla. <laughs> now that is not the sound I wanted it to make, as in no sound. That's what I was looking for, but it only really makes that sound when there's no filling. This kind of tastes exactly like I thought it would. It's nice. It's nice. <laughs> it's very like tangy because of the feta. Got nothing bad to say. I don't have anything particularly good to say. I will say this is a great base. I think you could really amp this up, which would then probably no longer be a gibanitsa, just a great creation in general. Because I think this is quite boring. It's good, but like it can be great. I think the first thing that I would do is add spring onion either on top or into the mixture. Ooh, guys, I'll finally know how to pronounce it. Oh, <laughs> so apparently what I said in the beginning is completely wrong. That syllable is actually short. Gibanitsa. Anyway, so I think you know me and my taste by now and I always need some sort of fresh component. I would add some vegetables to the mixture. Maybe even just some bell pepper, something something in there that makes it seem fresher. I need more. I need some more depth to it. In saying that, I also mean I need some more seasoning in there. I guess I'll eat this and put on top whatever I can find in the fridge. And then I'll see you for dinner. Actually, I think I might just prepare that earlier, try it earlier, and then just have it off camera in the evening. And then I can start building my furniture. Let me eat that and then I'll be back. Hi, did you miss me? Hi. If you've seen last week's video, you know what's ahead. There's a reason I was at this Indian, African, Asian store, and it's because I needed some spices in order to make this week's dinner. We're gonna make something Indian again because I don't think in this context I've ever done something Indian. I've chosen something easy just to ease us into it. I don't think what we're gonna make is actually a full-on proper meal. I think you're supposed to have it either with rice or bread or it can be a filling for samosas and stuff so it's very versatile. <laughs> I'm probably just gonna have it on its own. Also I'm really looking forward to it because it just seems a little lighter and like fresher than any other things we've had so 
far today. We're gonna make an alu masala. Now let's just get started. I'm not ready yet. <laughs> you are going to need 450 grams of potatoes peeled and chopped and also cooked. Four tablespoons or I think almost 60 grams of salted butter. 405 grams of diced yellow onion, two teaspoons of finely grated ginger, and one red or green chili. Spices, one teaspoon of garam masala, which mm, smells so good, half a teaspoon of turmeric, a quarter of a teaspoon of cayenne, three quarters of a teaspoon of ground cumin, and about one and a half teaspoons of salt. 50 grams of frozen peas, which are still frozen, and some fresh cilantro. All right, so obviously you're gonna cook the potatoes first. We can coarsely mash them with a fork. Okay. <sighs> Set that aside, maybe that is why I introduced them to Eliza. Now we're gonna go to the stove and melt some butter. Medium heat. <sighs> Quite a lot of butter. So now we add the onion and about a teaspoon of the salt and we're gonna let the onion cook for about six minutes. Add chili and ginger and cook a minute more. Now we stir in the spices. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Once the spices smell aromatic after about 30 seconds, you're going to add the mashed potatoes, the rest of the salt, the frozen peas, and the cilantro. Now we just stir to combine. I guess that's done. Yay! As aforementioned, <laughs> we're gonna try while it's still hot. And then I'm gonna have it later. I should have bought some bread, but also I went to that store last week and I wasn't sure if it would hold up for this long, so... No. This looks like a paella in the viewfinder. You know what my biggest regret in life is? Okay. <laughs> That's a bit dramatic. Also, it has nothing to do with this. It has to do with paella though. Also, probably not my biggest regret in life, but one off. So I've been veggie for like, I want to say six years. And I've always loved the idea of a paella because it just looks so nice and so good and yada yada. About 10 years ago was the only time I've ever had a paella in Mallorca and it wasn't a good one. It was really quite bad. <laughs> of course, before that I had never had paella. We could all tell in the moment, this is not how it's supposed to be. And after that, I just never had the chance to eat paella again. And now I might never have the chance again for obvious reasons. And that is something I regret. <laughs> All of this to say, <laughs> this looks like a paella. It's veggie and hopefully really, really nice. I mean, maybe you guys have found a nice veggie paella recipe, then please send it my way because I can make that in another one of these videos. Oh, speaking of, I'm never gonna try this. <laughs> so much to say all of a sudden. If you have any more recipes or if you guys want me to try a recipe from your country or just any other country, just tell me down below, tell me what country it's from and maybe I'll try it in the next video. I especially have a hard time finding breakfast. If you've got a nice breakfast in your country, then please send that my way. Look guys, I'm just gonna have a nice little portion. It's an afternoon snacky. Are the peas still frozen? Smells absolutely heavenly. Mmm, tastes really nice. A bit salty, even for me. I've already added salt to the potatoes when I cook them because I always do that. So maybe I shouldn't have in this case. Mmm, mmm, mmm. That's what I need. This tastes fresh, a lot of seasoning going on and I love that. Some garlic would be nice. I'm loving life right now. So maybe I won't wait until tonight, baby, to eat that up. The first two recipes obviously could have been perfected. The second one, I think everything went fine except for me struggling with that pastry, but I just think it could be better. Dinner is just gonna be fantastic. I'm gonna be in heaven later. And unless you also make this and are busy in heaven after eating it, I guess. Nos vemos la próxima vez. Y bye guys. Thank you.